Hello EFD squad and welcome back to Continental Club where we discuss the hottest topics in European football as selected by you, the beautiful viewers at home. Joining me is Dude, it's Joe. We've got to shoot the shit real quick today because Ginge on the end has a train to catch. Mm. He's going back to Exeter for Christmas. Merry Christmas Hi, mate. to you. You're looking yeah. forward to a proper cider? <laughs> yeah, proper cider my boy, nice bit of scrumpy. Anyway, we're doing an awards ceremony on the continent much like we did in sunday fives it's almost like we've run out of inspiration come the end of the year and we're starting with the best manager on the continent for the calendar year not just the start of this season important to remember i did forget it in sunday fives now joseph who is your best manager on the end uh well we've spoken about this on sunday vibes we've spoken about this also on sunday vibes podcast uh on the podcast i went for pep guardiola but i know we put some stipulations that this has to be on the continent so i'm gonna rob patrick van straten's answer yeah, and i'm gonna simple. potentially say pablo machine mm -hmm. at sevilla um did a great job at Girona, well documented and now at Sevilla has them performing at the second best side in the league. I mean, it's not even as if they're outperforming expected goals that badly. They're no. pretty much on track, second in the league. I think they're level on points with Atletico Madrid, two clear of Real Madrid now. Getting great things, particularly out of their forward line. <coughs> ben Yedder looks unbelievable this year. Unstoppable. Um, Andre Silva looks unstoppable as well, as does um, Sarabia, I think. Pretty much all of them are performing at about 0.9 expected goals or assists per 90, which is Ooh. absolutely ridiculous. Bring out the bacon. Um, so cheddar. I think Pablo Machine has shown himself to be adaptable, really like watching Sevilla play, and did great things at the start of year with Hirona. So can't look much further than him, in my opinion, other than the obvious big guns. There are obvious names, which I'm sure... Both of you are going to touch on. <laughs> Doogie, I've heard who you're going to say, and you definitely I mean, outclassed Pablo Machine. But I, I just wanted to give a shout out to a slightly underrated name. I'm absolutely well. spitting with your selection, because that's who I was just going to use off the bat with zero preparation. But you've come in, you've stole my answer, mm. you've stole Van Strong's chair, you're the thief, mate. You're a cradle snatcher. I am. What have you said? Uh, I'm going to go for my lookalike in Max Allegri. Uh, he is so Look alike, hold on. You're being let's just get that on screen that's, now. That's kind. That's <laughs> let's get, kind. Let's get a poll. Allegri is Allegri would be lucky to look Resemble like. Resemble Allegri, go on. Um, so he's obviously taking them to what will probably be a fifth uh, domestic title in a row. They, uh, no, seventh in a row. His fifth. Fi his yeah. fifth, sorry. Yeah. Uh, they look pretty unstoppable in Serie A once again. Uh, obviously fell at, the, fell at the semi-final stage of the Champions League uh, against Real Madrid in a really un quite unfortunate way. They were actually set to go out until Ronaldo got that penalty in pretty much the last minute. And Buffon was pretty pissed off to say That was least. one of the iconic moments of football in 2018. Oh, it was brilliant, wasn't it? Garbage well, bag from yeah. hearts, yeah. But <laughs> equally, I thought they were, uh, equally, I thought they were lucky to scrape past Tottenham. True. I think if Tottenham didn't capitulate mm. in a 15 minute spell, I thought across the two legs, Spurs were the better side. Yeah, Spurs did a lot of that in, in the Champions League last year, conceding bunches of goals in short periods. I just think Allegri is so, he's so clever. His tactical substitutions are really, really clever. In that game against Spurs, he made two uh, tactical switches in five minutes just to mess with Pochettino's head. And they then went and scored in the next 10. Yeah. Um, just He's just really clever. He's really on the ball. Uh, and he's got a fantastic receiving hairline, just like me. So I've got a lot of love for Allegri. He's got a lot of years than you, though, hasn't he? He does. He does, unfortunately. <laughs> God knows what I look like when I'm Allegri's age. <laughs> Mate, you'll age like a fine wine or a port, you know, because you're Scottish. Indeed. Is, is port Scottish? Is port Scottish? I'm more of a whiskey. Yeah. And a 30 year. A 30 year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your favourite whiskey? Uh, famous Grass. <laughs> got the distillery oh, yeah. just down the road. Cheap date. Uh, <laughs> I've gone for Nagelsmann. I actually went for the Hatafe manager on the podcast, which was a proper left field chat. I just felt like talking about something new. But Nagelsmann this year, yeah, he's one of three or four candidates. I could have said I don't want to retrace my steps, so I'm going to opt for him. Hoffenheim, just without him, I fear for their chances with him. They are one of the best performing sides consistently in the Bundesliga. Maybe points and places haven't bared that out in the last you know, two or three years. Obviously, secure Champions League football has taken them from relegation fodder to that stage, to that pedestal. Um, but this season, I think they're averaging the first most shots on target mm -hmm. above Bayern Munich on wow. 6.5 a game and the second most chances created in general. When you consider Dortmund are flying, where the attacking talent that RB Leipzig has, 
I mean, Tedesco, Schalke have made a bad start to the season, so I guess they're kind of out of the running for a Champions League uh, place. You know, despite him, he could have been a candidate for this, I suppose, mm -hmm. finishing second in the Bundesliga. No one really foresaw that, did they? But he's Nagelsmann, this is, is doing extremely well with the limited pool of talent at his disposal. He's only got five players in that team who take over two shots per 90. That's, that's pretty grim. Uh, Kramerich is top with 3.8 shots per 90. And I think he's got six goals, two assists and 11 appearances this Dembe, term. Yeah. They've been really decisive, his goals. Demi Bay, excellent player. We've rated him for a couple of years now. He could probably move on to a bigger club. He might, you know, follow Nagelsmann to Hoffenheim. They could probably uh, use a man of his talents. But, I mean, after that, I think you get to Joel Linton. Uh, is taking their second most shots on 2.2 per 90. So to be able to overperform in attack with those players would suggest that it's not just these certain individuals overperforming. The system itself yeah. is extrapolating this That's from funny. those players. It's just interesting. I think, it's awful. Awful. I think it, it says how good he is that, that RB Leipzig have managed to get him in. And we know how well RB Leipzig have run this early like it, they've appointed him effectively 12 months in advance yeah and he's and his hoffenheim haven't suffered despite him yeah his, his, hoffenheim his, his, his replacement no uh i think they're who are they considering oh um Sorry, that's on the fly but I, no, I, you're not, I haven't heard i i do know this I think, were, they, were they considering marco rose Really? Hoffenheim are considering Marco Rose, yeah, Marco Rose from Salzburg, Salzburg, I think, from yeah, Salzburg. Will absolutely smash it. Then. Yeah, I mean, his Salzburg side, absolutely exceptional, I was raving about them on a podcast as well, just... They've scored 106 goals this season, Salzburg. They're moving. Already? Yeah, they've, yeah. Uh, including friendlies, including pre-season friendlies. But just unaffected goals. by the atmosphere at Celtic Park, they're moving... Sorry, already? Yeah. yeah. 106. They've played 33 games, they've scored 106 goals. Yeah, but they must have beat like a team full of skiers, about 11 mil <laughs> yeah, I think they probably there's did no, in pre-season. There's no way that happened. It's just insane. Oh, just all in competitive games. They're Surely. invincible at the moment, they have yet to be beaten. Um, but Nogsman, just to finish us off, still 31. He uh, has a current record of 41 wins, 28 draws and 25 losses in 94 matches. So he'll rack up 100 games before he leaves there, won't he? And like you said, I think he'll do fantastic things at Leipzig. Got some awesome talent there. It's not like they're underperforming with Ralph Ragnick at the moment. But um, I think unless uh, Bayern Munich strengthens significantly in the summer, they're going to have a couple of sides on their tails. Mm -hmm. in the form of Dortmund and Leipzig. Um, have we got any other special mentions? Are we going to talk about worst appointment, maybe? I think we should talk about worst appointment because there's been some absolute howlers. OK, let's, let's go for it. Um, I, seeing, as I took the small, seeing as I took the smaller name first off with Pablo Machine, I will go in with Lopetegui. Yeah, now, bad. as bad as this appointment was, for a number of different reasons, obviously under very, very hard circumstances, taking him out of Spain and then of, well, not wanting to take him out of Spain, but take him out of Spain to such an effect that you fucked the Spanish FA off and they sacked him, um, was not a great start. To then sell Cristiano Ronaldo in your first summer, the key player at Real Madrid, I think he was taking six shots a game, something like that, wasn't he, last season? So you're taking six shots out of that side and not signing a replacement mm. other than Mariano Diaz. It was an impossible job. Wasn't I mean, um, they're already taking 18 as a whole, not only, I think that was a league high, yeah. but when you take Ronaldo six out. Yeah, you lose a third and you replace that with Mariano Diaz, who, as good as he was at Leon, it was, wasn't mm -hmm. he? Still Pro probably still the worst attacker in that Leon. Trident, uh, we, you would probably yeah, still probably. have said you'd take Memphis to pie ahead of him if you really wanted a goal scorer. Um, so I think it was poor summer, poor pre-planning by Perez. It was set up to fail from the start and then Lopetegui just, he just didn't have it. I just think he didn't command that dressing room in a similar sort of fashion to David Moyes potentially when he first came at Man United, he didn't have the respect of the big names that a man like Zinedine Zidane had from his playing record really. Lopetegui, I'm sure, is a fine manager and I'm sure he will go on to manage a decent side and do a good job, but that was the perfect storm of career uh, there Real Madrid is, there's also There's also the, <laughs> the chance that it, he might just be better suited to international level management. He's not had a lot of experience with the day-to-day -day running of a top level football mm. club. So prior to working his way up the pyramid of Spanish football, so he, he um, I think he had unbeaten records with the under-21s as well. 
Um, he only managed Porto for a, a largely unsuccessful, well, yeah. what, 18 months? So that was always going to be a huge transition for him. And like you said, it doesn't help when you've not got a settled team and when you're about to turn over the whole side. Doogie, who are you going for? Um, I will go for someone more recent, but just just to finish on Lopetegui, in fairness to him, Danny Carvajal said he's the best coach that he's ever worked with. Yeah, yeah. So, come on, Isco, come on. Isco also said he's got. I think he's an excellent he's a coach. He'll come, he'll come back again. I don't know whether he's suited to a super club, uh, but he'll come back I, again. I think it. What he, I don't know if he didn't command the respect of the players. They all spoke favourably about him when when they let uh, when he left. Sorry, it was. It was just the goals had dried up by the time yeah. by the time he'd gone because Benzema had that little purple patch at the start of the season, didn't he? I think he had like five in his first seven, and then back. Bale then got injured as well. Just just went cold. There's yet a surprise. Again. It's not like we could have seen foreseen Gareth Bale being injured. Oh, I mean, how bad is that as pre-planning? You know, Bale is going to complete a maximum half a season. Yeah. He's done it every single season for the, since he's been at the Bernabeu. So just grow up, Perez. Perez is probably going to go and appoint Mourinho now as well. I reckon, I reckon oh, Mourinho yeah. to Real Madrid Porto, be happy, is potentially my next say that, um, uh, Asensio needs to step up from a big moments player into a big season player. I don't think he can. Do, he's, I've never seen him do it across 20, 30 games. Well, his numbers are, are just fine, aren't they? They're yeah. fine. They're not exceptional. Yeah. Um, it is such a big rebuild job, though. You've got to find a replacement for Benzema. You've still yet to replace Cristiano Ronaldo. You've probably got to replace an a aging Luka Modric. Whether or not Kovacic wants to come back after Chelsea Cruz remains to be 30. seen. Cruz is nearly 30. Ramos, Ramos is 32. Uh, you need to find a partner for Varane. It's, it's such a big, it's <laughs> such just a big <laughs> job. Yeah, it is, um, so it I is. feel sorry for ever to go in and do it, but I think it would yeah. Jose Mourinho. Speaking of big jobs, that moves seamlessly into my worst appointment. It's got to be someone appointed more recently. It's got to be Thierry Henry. Uh, went in, similarly to Lopetegui, went in in very difficult circumstances. We've obviously lost so much talent over the last two years, it's not even worth thinking about. Uh, disastrous start to the year, it's not the time where you want to take the first position in football management. But I also don't think he completely helps himself as well. I know it's difficult to judge a clip off social media, but when you haven't won that many games, I think he's won one, don't call out one of your young players in a Champions League press conference for not tucking his chair in. Oh, people love that though. Did I you? think that was so stupid. It's just, it's just like, look at me, I'm the boss now, trying to assert your authority. Just don't do that in front of the media. Everyone was like, oh yeah, he's, he's you know, establishing himself. <laughs> just tuck in his f***ing chair, it's a chair. I just thought, I just thought it was so unnecessary. Rubbed you up the wrong he's had, way. He's, had, he's no. had a bit of a nightmare too. Yeah, pissed me off. Fair enough. Two good suggestions then, let's move on, because you know, men to see about dogs, especially this dog on the end. Let's answer these in quick fire fashion. Best bit of business, let's exclude Cristiano Ronaldo, having his most productive season since 11-12, really discovered a bit of form. Has an Allegri squeezing every last bit out of him. Joe. <laughs> um, I think I'll probably go for a Dortmund player. I'm not going to talk about Paco Alcatel because Pato does it on the podcast, but I'm going to go for Axel Witzel. Signed by Dortmund in the summer immediately. And I think as well, what I will say about Axel Witzel is I think we all kind of wrote that move off yeah. as that's an average bit of business at very best. You know, mm. hadn't really done it at a top league before. I'd been wasting his time out in Asia, came back to uh, Europe with Borussia Dortmund, has been the fulcrum really of that whole midfield from Lucien Favre and to be in a Borussia Dortmund side that are crushing it this much and be the heart of the midfield can only mean you're a fantastic signing. Look, they've got Paco for less and he's obviously scored way more goals but Axel Witzel I think deserves a massive shout out at this segment because he has done things I think literally nobody predicted. Even Dortmund fans, when that move happened, I remember on my timeline, were, were not happy because he didn't fit the classic Dortmund persona of being young, either written off by another team or coming through the youth, youth side and signed for a small amount of money. So I think Witzel, hats off, what a signing. Yeah, and hadn't played in the top five league as well for yeah. a while. Um, Ever really, yeah. if you, inc if you oh, don't include true. Portugal, yeah, and yeah. Russia doesn't count, does it? True. Um, I am going to go for Piantek at Genoa. Um, signed from Krakowia, I believe, in Poland. No one knew about him. No one thought he'd be, you know, the player that he's proved to be. He's, his numbers have slightly tailed off, um, but he's still already comfortably in double figures. Uh, I think he still might be leading the Serie A goal scoring charts. Mm -hmm. um, just an incredible start to the year. He's got to go to Piantek. Yeah, I think I actually said Piantek for some of oh, the vibes. So. Nice. 
I've got some, some more left field shouts, I guess, because we've just covered this topic so extensively, haven't we? I watched a bit of Serie A recently, and Cristante has impressed me at Roma, despite their relatively mediocre start to the domestic campaign. I think he's contributed to five goals from midfield in just nine starts, made a fair few appearances off the bench as well. So he's been a really decent little signing for them. Uh, I've liked Politano at Inter Milan. I think he's got around... 10 goal contributions in 15, 16 starts. Um, that could be, yeah, nine or 10. Uh, but he's been, yeah, really productive little player since joining from Sassuolo and stepped up to fill the the creative void left by a lack of Raja Nyangalan, who added goals to his game, didn't he, Roma, and then was bought by Spalletti to do the same at Inter Milan and just has been in and out the side, I think, under 10 starts in Italy this campaign just because he can't stay fit. Um, we got any others that we can throw in the mixer last minute? Any There's lots of Premier League drop? shouts, isn't there? But we're deliberately not including the likes of Van Dijk, Laporte, people like that, who were signed in the earlier windows just because they're boring. We spoke about all other stuff. So people will be commenting saying, why are you saying Van Dijk? You signed in January. Well, because we've spoken about him extensively on podcasts. So. Yeah, so big old caveat there. This is just whatever is coming to my first thing this morning. Um, right, so we've got a 2019 predictions Ooh, then. Predictions. Apologies if this feels go, a then. little bit rushed, but like Joe said, we do do these in depth on the podcast, which is coming out Sunday. We've touched upon stuff in Sunday Vibes as well, and uh, there's just plenty of other content to come uh, that fleshes this out. But let's start with some very, you know, rudimentary predictions. La Liga winner, 2019. Barcelona, sadly. Definitely Barcelona. I don't, think, I don't think Sevilla have got enough to last the course. No. Atletico Madrid have been so disappointing this year. I put them as my disappointment of the start of the season. Um, really thought they'd be up there this year. Hasn't really proved to be the case. L um, little revival recently. Slight revival, yeah. but I, I just thought they'd be. I they, this is their year that they could potentially win yeah, it. We all knew this was their mm. year to win it. Madrid had fucked it in the market with Lopetegui as well. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go for... Barcelona as well. Um, the just strength and depth in their squad. More to come from Arthur. Much more to come from Coutinho. Malcolm not even getting a game. Dembele yeah, nice. in and out the side. Questions over his professionalism have lingered, but he's tended to be very good when he's on the pitch. And now they've just added a defender. Five minute warning from Liv. So let's move on to Seri A winner. I mean, do we even need to discuss yeah, this? She, no, she it's not Juve. Again, Juve. Juve. Juve and PSG. Yeah. Juve are eight points ahead of Napoli or six points ahead of Inter. So, game over. Done. League and League and PSG. It was I mean, point. Uh, I, mean, if we, I mean, if we skated over Serie A, then League and. Bundesliga winner. Far more interesting. Can Nico Kovac's men save this situation? Now, Dortmund recently lost to Dusseldorf 2-0. So their unbeaten start to the season has come to an end. There's been definite chinks in their arm. We've spoke about their underlying numbers in depth. They aren't producing, you know, more shots than Bayern Munich. I think they're third or fourth in that mm. regard as well, maybe even less. Expected points actually has them down just about in the Champions League spots at current. And now they've lost that momentum. Can Bayern, and if a team can, you know, find a way to catch, to catch Dortmund in the situation, it's Bayern. Can they catch him, gentlemen? Not for me, unless they have a really big January. There's, there's so many issues in that Bayern squad now. Um, they need a big turnover, and I don't think they'll do it in January. Uh, I'm also gonna. I originally, I think earlier in the season, said I think Bayern will come back and win it, but I think Dortmund. I think Dortmund are gonna uh, just about. It will be very close, but I think Dortmund will just about win it because I'm not as interested in their underlying numbers Dortmund this season just because Lucien Favre always outperforms the expected goals models and the, ex and the expected goals against models well, every single for season. For a couple of seasons at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Gladbach, and right. a Gladbach as well. But I, I, think, um, I think Dortmund will just have enough. I also think that Bayern will go deeper in the Champions League than Dortmund. So I think that will probably have a more negative effect. I think Bayern are going to catch him. I really do. Yeah, I think, yeah it's like only two games away from from turning it around, really, from being in touch and distance. Fair enough. Um, Champions League winner. <sighs> Want to start, dude? Because uh, you're in, you know, I'm still not, yeah. Champions League regalia. I am, actually. I'm not quite sure about the shirt, but anyway. Um, I like, you know, I like the it's very, it's sheer very low volume cut. of chest hair. Very low cut. Um, very difficult to say. I, I remember doing a live stream a couple of weeks ago. I still wasn't quite sure. I think it's between Man City and Juventus, but I'm not uh, entirely sure where to place my bets at the moment, but that's not the aim of this so show. So why, why Man City so or Juventus, I'm, then? 
Uh, Man City have just got two full of, you know, they could put out two 11s and still not lose pace in the Premier League. They could play their best 11 in the Champions League. Juventus have actually struggled a bit in the Champions League so far this season. I was really surprised by their loss to Young Boys. They also got beaten by Man United at home. So they're not invincible by any stretch of the imagination, but their forward line, there's just so many options they could turn to any one of four or five players mm. and uh, still comfortably beat most, most teams in Serie A, so they'll keep both teams fresh. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go plump my bets, I'm going to go Juventus. I think I might say Liverpool. Ooh, mm. okay. I bet. Yeah, I think, I think Man City are the best team in the competition, but I don't know whether they've got the experience within the squad to win the Champions League. So okay. I'm, I'm potentially, for me, what I'm, 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 I'm... What experience do Liverpool have? I'm, I'm, more, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not so far asked about the experience of Liverpool. I, I genuinely think the Anfield atmosphere has a huge role to play in them getting to Champions League finals, and then it just comes down to one game. I think that Liverpool, I would back on the day at Anfield to beat any team in that competition and buy any amount of goals needed to go through. Really like Even if they're 2-0 down awesome. away to Madrid, yeah. I'll back them to come back 3-0. I don't know why, there's just something about Anfield that doesn't. more, well, pedigree. Whereas I do not think that about Liverpool the as a club. If, I, if, I, if Man City are 2-0 down away from home first leg, I do not back them to come back. I don't know why, just there's something about that Anfield atmosphere. But also, I think Barcelona. Barcelona are probably my have out on shelves for, for winning it. Yeah, I think I went with Barcelona at the start of the season as well, Tomlinson, so I'm going to stick with mm. them. Europa League winner. Arsenal for me. Unai Emery, Ooh. I read the other day, hasn't lost a game in the Europa League since November 2015, which is mental. I see, yeah, Arsenal's a great shout. Uh, outside shout for Salzburg as well, crushing it domestically, so they're walking away with that league. They'll probably put all of their eggs in the European basket. Uh, Semi final last year, obviously got chucked about by Marseille and at, at lost 5 2, I think, 5 3. Mm. But um, yeah, I think Salzburg sound a very good chance of winning the competition. Yeah, Salzburg were absolutely formidable when they came to Celtic Park, like I said. Um, I'm going to go for Celtic because uh, I don't have a, a sensible answer <laughs> and Brendan Rodgers will solidify, no? solidify his legacy. Shut up. Solidify yeah. his legacy and you know he'll bring in, is it Edson Alvarez we've been linked with from Club America? That's the sort of signing oh. that wins you the Europa League. So I think they want 12 million for him, which would be a record signing. Um, yeah, Europa League winner. Uh, any one of the teams that drops out of the, the Champions League, you'd imagine. Um, I mean, we've, we've drawn Valencia, which I'm, I'm not particularly enamoured with. I think they'll, they'll probably yeah. do as yeah, they were. quite easily over two legs. Um, but, you know, that's all we have time for on this week's Continental Club. Thank you very much for watching. Bit slap bash, but, you know, like I said, plenty of other content to compensate for yeah, that. Guys, what else is happening? FD, FDFC. Yeah, go over to Football Daily where we need to talk has just dropped what we talked yes. about this week. Uh, talking about a number of different things, mainly one of the biggest frauds in football history. Ooh. And it's not Pele. Ooh. So, George Wright, calm yourself. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs>